The movie's not bad, but it's not that good. <laughs> Hello everyone, TJV here, and today I'm going to be talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, the third Ant-Man movie in the Ant-Man trilogy. You don't really need to see any of the Ant-Man movies, or any of the Avengers movies, or any movie for that matter, to really watch this movie you really don't i mean nothing in this movie besides maybe one part would be hard to understand but they kind of show you flashbacks in the movie anyway so like that doesn't really matter this movie doesn't need any setup going into it to understand it and to enjoy the movie and having a good experience with it and i did have a good experience with it but it was just barely good like if you need to be 50 percent or better to have a good experience, I was maybe around the 51, 52%, because there just wasn't a lot in this movie. And again, I don't know if it's because I've been spoiled with Marvel movies ever since I was eight years old, but this movie just didn't have a lot to it. The Quantum Realm, I'm going to focus on this part. The Quantum Realm isn't bad, it's just there's nothing interesting. There's nothing unique there. It looks like any other crazy, weird world that you would visit and i can definitely see people just referencing anything as the quantum realm you know you want to pandora quantum realm everything below the water in aquaman and atlantis or whatever quantum realm i mean like it's just this weird world that you visit but it's not unique in any sort of way and that's my problem and you definitely do feel like there's a lot of green screening like, that's what a lot of the movie feels like. And I don't know what it is. I, like, I, I want to be invested in this world. It's just there's not enough to invest me. It doesn't feel tangible like Pandora or even Atlantis and Aquaman, for that matter. But regardless, um, the tone of the movie, in terms of, like, the humor, meh. Uh, the Quantum Realm people, okay. There's, like, one thing that I kind of chuckled at, but that kind of just leads into the humor. So I'm going to talk about the tone here. The Quantum Realm people definitely had some humor parts here and there, and so did the Ant-Man family. Um, I think Kang had a joke at one point, but it was okay. I mean, everything with Kang in terms of, like, tone, Jonathan Majors, great, awesome. The Ant-Man family, I feel like Michael Pena being in the first and the second Ant-Man movie really hindered this third movie because you want to go into this movie saying okay we might have some like heist elements from the other movies there's obviously gonna be a little bit of drama a little bit of sad stuff here and there but the comedy in the ant-man movies that's where it's really good and besides paul rudd having a few like good lines here and there all of it was like really bad like the humor was not good at all there's a whole joke about holes in this movie like holes and it's not funny at all. Trust me, this isn't a spoiler. Like, there's no spoilers in this video. You can read the title. But the whole joke about holes is not funny. It's not funny at all. And I don't know why, but it just felt... I really felt old because I felt like that was just something for kids to laugh at. Which I get it. Yeah, Marvel movie for the kids. Blah, 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 blah. But I usually can stand that and move on. But it just feels like there's jokes where there shouldn't be jokes at. And it kind of hinders the movie. It makes me want to swap my emotions. Like, okay, this is a serious moment. To, okay, we're laughing. Okay, now we're back to serious. And it's just kind of jarring to me. Even Paul Rudd has a few lines in this movie that I didn't really like. But I think Paul Rudd's performance is obviously awesome, amazing. And I do think it's a little bit better than Ant-Man and the Wasp. Not better than the first Ant-Man movie. The Ant-Man movie, I think, was just on a whole different level of its own compared to the second one and this third one, Quantumania. Hope Van Dyne and Janet Van Dyne, they're good. I like Janet's uh, relationship with the Quantum Realm, and Hope's just sort of there. That's how it is. Um, Hank Pym has a really cool moment in the movie. I, I, I like Michael Douglas as Ant-Man, the old Ant-Man Hank Pym. I really like that. Uh, Cassie, not that bad. I was really going into it being like, okay, it's going to be, I'm not really going to like, you know, the younger version of their parent or whatever, you know, or the the kid Avenger that they're trying to push in all these movies. Like Ironheart and Wakanda Forever, Riri Williams, didn't really like her. And I don't know, I had the same feeling like I'm going to feel the same about Cassie, but Cassie was okay. Again, just a few lines I didn't like, and I, I definitely think it comes down to whoever came up with some of these jokes kind of leaves a bad taste in your mouth about the character overall. Like, like that's how you're just like, Ugh, okay, let's go. Um, everything to do with Kang is great, and everything to do with Scott Lang is great, I think, besides a few of the jokes here and there. But Kang didn't really have any bad jokes. I think he says one joke in the movie, and then everything else is great. And then the whole premise of the movie is good. It just feels really short and shallow. 
and it feels like they didn't really commit to something. It feels like they could have had a, a rewrite too. Not that like they reshot anything and changed the movie drastically or anything, but it feels like they were writing a script and then they were like, eh, let's go this way just so we can do this instead of that. It really feels like that. And I feel like there's multiple moments where like some characters could have died or some characters could have went and done this or done that or something major could have happened and it didn't really happen. It goes the way you expect a Marvel movie to go. But the end credit scenes are supposed to be like the, whoa, okay, this is the effect of what happened in the movie. But really, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like the movie's like a mid-tier, okay-ish movie. And then the end credit scenes are just awesome and they, fu they wanted to wait for the big reveal at the end credit credit scene that's what it feels like and it doesn't really feel like a good stepping stone for the next movie but it definitely is this movie is just a middle movie to get to the next part and it doesn't it's not a good movie now don't get me wrong it's not a bad movie by any means I mean I think I can rewatch this way down the road and maybe enjoy some parts but I'd only rewatch it if I had to for like a future Avengers movie or something which I definitely think this movie will be that type of movie you will have to go back, rewatch this, maybe just a couple scenes, and then you'll be set up for another movie down the road. And I think that's how it is. No big cameos, I would say, but they definitely should have had some, I think. I think having the cool dynamic between like Thor and Hulk and Thor Ragnarok would have made this third Ant-Man movie better. You know, the third Thor movie had a cameo in it. The third Captain America movie had Cap and Iron Man. The third Thor movie had Thor and Hulk. And I think the third Ant-Man movie would have been cool if you threw in a hero and that hero went along for the journey throughout the movie I really felt like that would have had enough uniqueness to this movie but this movie just feels really bland to me and it feels meh like everyone goes eh, it's just a basic Marvel movie that's what this is and I don't want all the Marvel haters to like just hate on this movie and use this movie forever but I definitely feel like this is going to be a movie that Marvel haters will use saying that this is just a very bland movie and it's exactly what it is not very unique but like I said if you like this movie it's okay because I can see the parts that you might like of the movie they just didn't go far enough into those things for me is what I'm saying and for the things that are bad it could have just been avoided by writing a better script I think but again do I know what that is? No. Again, I feel like they were going a different way for this movie, but they didn't, and whatever that choice was and why it was, I'll never know, I guess. But I am excited. The end credit scenes gave me excitement for future Marvel projects, and I'm not giving up on Marvel just because of a few bad movies. I mean, I never gave up on DC, and they've had the most stinkers out of anybody. I would even said the X-Men franchise did, but I wasn't ready to, like, give up on the X-Men franchise. This definitely isn't a time to panic just because this movie isn't all that good. But it's not all that bad, and there there are things to continue to do going forward and there are things that we should look forward to especially on the movie side and the Disney Plus side so I'm excited I'm excited to see what is of the future uh, my official score of the movie like leaving the theater was a 6 out of 10 I joked with my little brother saying that like the end credit scene gave it a plus one to that, but I'm going to drop my score down to five and then give it a plus one for the end credit scene. So the movie without the end credit scenes is a five out of 10. It's a mediocre movie, but with the end credit scenes, it's a nice six out of 10. Again, six out of 10 ain't bad. It's just really hard for me to get a 10 out of 10. I don't really rate a lot of movies 10 out of 10 because I don't find that much movies perfect. There's always flaws in every movie. My enjoyment and my excitement and my experience has to succeed those flaws in order for it to be a perfect movie and um this movie certainly did not do that there were points i looked over at my girlfriend and my younger brother being like what the fuck but anyways if you've seen the movie comment down below what you think be careful about spoilers down in the comments um hopefully you were able to see it i definitely recommend free people seeing it so don't take my review as oh i might not even go see it anymore go see it go experience it you might be one of the few that actually enjoy this movie um i could definitely see myself enjoying the movie if i was younger and not saying it's all for the kids or whatever it's just, I, I don't know, I just feel older watching a movie now, so I expect a lot, a lot out of Marvel and all the actors and the talent in this movie, and um, I definitely think the talent in this movie did the best they can, but it's definitely down to the way the story was written and set up in the script, and how mediocre the quantum realm is i think i think those are kind of the major flaws in the movie but regardless that's my score six out of ten tell me what you guys think of the movie what's your score for the movie thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys all next time peace